I tell you, earlier when we were flicking through the archives, I noticed Dame Elizabeth Taylor was born on this day in 1932. She died in 2011 at the age of 79, scored her first film role at the age of 10, went on to become one of the great legends of the silver screen, starring in movies like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and Cleopatra. Will therefore assume the position of a suppliant before this throne. You will kneel. I will what? On your knees. You dare ask the proconsul of the Roman Empire? I asked it of Julius Caesar. I demand it of you. Her personal life was as fascinating as her movie roles. Wayne Griffin is an enthusiastic collector of Elizabeth Taylor memorabilia. He was a pen friend to the star for many years and he's completed a new book titled Dame Elizabeth Taylor, Shades of Violet. Wayne, nice to speak with you. Um, lovely to speak with you, Jill. Thanks for having me on today. Remind us where your relationship with all things Elizabeth Taylor began, Wayne. Oh, look, it's like... I think that uh, when you have someone famous and you want to have some sort of affiliation with, you want to, you sort of start thinking, well, how am I going to uh, create some sort of relationship with this person that seems to be uh, untouchable? Um, obviously, that was the case for me. I, I think I first wrote... I actually wrote her a letter when she was in the Betty Ford Centre uh, some years ago. It's in, in her first visit, I think, in about 1986, it was. And uh, I pinned her, one of my favourite pictures of her is the Get Well card. And that sort of started the correspondence between her and myself over the, the, the following years. What, uh, what would you write to her about and, and what would be sent back, Wayne? Uh, depending on what was going on in her life at the time, I know during her perfume promotion uh, time and the time she was very heavily involved with their AIDS crisis and, and things like that or AIDS awareness, um, quite often I'd get things sent straight back to me saying that you know, Miss Taylor is unavailable to provide uh, whatever you wanted at the time, an autograph or whatever. So, but, but at the times that she was able to provide things, she would uh, use her own stationery and quite often send me uh, a card that obviously was typed out and signed or um, on occasion I've had Christmas cards and birthday cards from her and, and written with my name on the envelope. Um, so... Yeah, that's the kind of things I would get from her. And what I would talk to her about would be what's going on in her life. And I could only gauge that through, obviously, through uh, media and tabloids and things like that and, and wishing her well with whatever health crisis she might have been facing at the time and stuff like that. And she did, fa she did go through quite a lot of difficulties with her health, particularly in later years, didn't she, Wayne? Yes, of course, yeah, yeah. What, what it was so magnetic about her, do you think? I don't know, I just found this sort of something quite alluring about her presence on, on the screen and, and, and even speaking with uh, industry professionals that have actually been in the same room as her is that she just commands that whole space and has this sort of incandescent uh, and gracious, uh, gracefulness, sorry, um, extraordinary gracefulness around her and beauty, obviously, as well. So it's just all quite... A, alluring and um yeah i just think it's amazing and you obviously weren't alone in thinking that way wayne because she's one of the greatest movie stars of, of our time where does she sit to you in terms of where of of her um legendary status compared to some of the other greats well look over the years jill there's been lots of different organizations have been you know done uh, statistics around what you're talking about and placed her at different levels of Stardom ship. I mean, um, something recently I read was uh, in America they put her at number 11, the, the 11th most, or it was the UK, the 11th most popular movie star of all time. But I mean, if you send that information obviously out to Elizabeth Taylor fans, they're not going to agree with that. Um, we all think she's number one. Yeah, of course you do, Wayne. <laughs> As you should. Now, you started collecting memorabilia. What kind of um, items have you gathered over the years? Well, I sort of started off just getting magazines. I, I used to go to the news agency once a week and scan all the magazines and look for articles or pictures of her on the front cover and things like that. And then so I built up a sort of a collection of scrapbooks and all the sort of standard paraphernalia type stuff, I think, that a collector first starts off with. 
and then I want us to dig a bit deeper into more of a personal, uh, getting more of a personal uh, collection. So I sort of went into the, you know, getting autographs and letters, and then I moved into um, obtaining um, through a, through worldwide um, recognition with co- other collectors and um, auction, celebrity auction houses and places like that. A lot of personal items like hairbrushes, curlers, ash, you know, ashtrays, shoes, just things that. If they could tell a story about Elizabeth Taylor, they, I'm sure they would uh, fill the room with amazement. We're speaking to Wayne Griffin, who is a collector of Elizabeth Taylor memorabilia and author of Dame Elizabeth Taylor, Shades of Violet. Tell us about Shades of Violet, Wayne, and the journey you wanted to take fans on in the book. Well, the Shades of Violet is obviously sort of... I've uh, named it that because it's well, that's it, uh, the essence of who she was and that was... Her favourite colour, her eyes are actually had shades of violet in them at, at certain times, depending on what she's wearing, obviously. Um, the readers of this book will be taken through a, a story of celebrity connection and how, and how I connected as a fan with Elizabeth Taylor and obviously um, her recognition of the collection and quite often she actually donated pieces from her own wardrobe personally to the collection. Um, and it's just like, you know, any, anyone that's a fan of obviously Dame Elizabeth or even Hollywood memorabilia um, can be absorbed through this magical journey um, of, the, of the collection. Wayne, she was a gift to the screen, but she contributed, and you've touched on this, talking about her work with uh, AIDS, she contributed a lot to public life in, in other areas, such as her charity work. Uh, yes, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, of course, that all stemmed back from having people in the industry that um, were obviously shunned for their sexuality or whatever the case may be, and obviously, you know, they had illnesses um, caused through AIDS and things like that that became a sort of a no-go to for all famous people. But she stood up and and um, was at the very you know, beginning in like sort of 1985 and got to the forefront of, of this uh, epidemic that, you know, she was losing friends and, and she didn't really like how society was sort of painting this kind of, all the stigma that was surrounding this type of illness. So she sort of, you know, let her hand to that. And I think towards the end, a lot of the movies towards the end of her life, she would only do them if the fee was donated to a, a charity of hers or even her own charity. And, um, and in keeping her legacy alive, we, at the end of the book, I've got a legacy page with, um, obviously, with the last quote that she says around keeping her legacy alive and, obviously, also a link there where people can make a donation to an age charity of, of her doing. So just keeping it, that legacy of her and in that space alive is, is probably one of the main reasons for the book. Wayne, favourite movie? Favourite movie? <laughs> I love it when people ask me this one. Um, you know what? It, 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 it can change, but um, look, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? I can just pull that out and watch that in the old time. Clear Patch is always the number one favourite as well. Um, Elephant Walk is, is another favourite, but uh, I guess, you know, at the top of the range, or there's even actually Rainsford County too, I think, is, is a favourite. But I mean, some of these favourites depends on what I have in the collection that associates me with that film. So um, there's a few items that obviously are associated with a few of the movies. So I guess the more I've got against the different movies, the, the more favourite it is, I think, at the end of the day. Wayne, thank you so much for sharing some of your uh, memories and stories with us. Appreciate it. Wayne Griffin, collector of Elizabeth Taylor memorabilia, author of Dame Elizabeth Taylor, Shades of Violet. Shall we hear a bit of uh, Elizabeth in one of her greatest movies, as Wayne uh, alluded to there, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, with one of the great loves of her life, of course, uh, the equally great Richard Burton. <laughs> I actually fell for him. It, that, there. Martha's a romantic at heart. Mm-hmm. That I am. I actually fell for him. And the match seemed practical, too. For a while, Daddy really thought that George minute, had the Martha. stuff to take over when he was Wait ready a minute, to retire. Martha. And we both thought that naturally... Stop it, Martha. Oh, what you want. I wouldn't go on with this if I were you. Oh, you wouldn't, would you? Would you not? You've already sprung a leak about you-know-what. What? 
Why? About the sprout, the little bugger, our son. If you start in on this other business, Martha, I warn you. I stand warned. Do we really have to go through all this? So anyway, I married the SOB. I had it all planned out. First, he'd take over the history department. Then when Daddy retired, he'd take over the whole college, you know? That was the way it was supposed to be. Getting angry, baby, huh? That was the way it was supposed to be. All very simple. And Daddy thought it was a good idea, too, for a while. Until he started watching for a couple of years. You getting angry? Until he watched for a couple of years and started thinking that maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. That maybe Georgie Boy didn't have the stuff. That maybe he didn't have it in him. Stop it, Martha. Why, 